Hey, what's up, super friends? So today, I figured I would do an oldie but a goodie. This is the Batman Arkham City Series 4 Batman figure. I've picked this one up in the past and I've used the pieces for customs. Well, that was after I kept it as is for a while, and then you know how it is when you're a customizer. You get the itch and then you start taking figures apart. Well, I always kind of regretted it. It's one of those ones where I was like, dude, this was a serious attempt from DC to give us a Batman action figure that would have all kinds of articulation. However, the body proportions on this figure are just a little bit weird, and you'll see as I take it out of the package, but I still wanted to actually have one of these as is. So, I bought another one, and I figured since I got it, I might as well open it up on the channel, so let's do just that. I always thought it was kind of cool that these Batman figures came in bubbles that were shaped kind of like Batman's head with the horns and the face and everything. Now, in this wave, there was Deadshot, there was Talia al Ghul, and there was Nightwing. And I never picked up Nightwing or Deadshot. To tell you the truth, I didn't really pick up very many of the Arkham City or, or Arkham Origins or Arkham Asylum Batman figures. I just never really got into them. Loved the game, never picked up many of the figures. However, I did get Talia, and I'll put her in the video as well. All right, so now that we've seen the back, now that we've seen the front, now we can actually open this guy up. Should I cut it? Should I use this or should I use scissors? I got a funny feeling scissors is gonna be safer. Yeah, let's use scissors. All right, so I found some scissors. I'm cutting this guy open. It's funny, whenever I use scissors, I always imagine that old Sesame Street skit. Okay, well, I'm almost finished here. Clippity clip, clippity clip, clip, clip. I always imagine him in my head when I'm using scissors. All right, so I've cut it open and I'm just gonna pop him out of the package as is. Do, 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 whoa. And here's what you get. Opening this up, you can actually see some of the other figures and different bits of Arkham memorabilia you could pick up. This was the giant Titan Joker. Looks very cool. I just, I don't know. I just never got into really collecting any of the Arkham figures. I just, I just didn't. They looked cool, but they just weren't my bag, baby. Gotta love me some twist ties. Just turn them, yank them. Pull them on out. Yoink, yoink, yoink. Seriously, you would need way more than three twist ties to hold Batman down because he's Batman. Seriously, just ask him. I'm Batman. So once you manage to wrestle Batman out of the package, this is the accessory you get with him. You get this little tiny Batarang, which is accurate to the video game. It's funny because if you wanted to get all of the different gadgets that you could get for the DC Direct Batman releases, you had to buy every single Batman they released because each one pretty much came with different gadgets. And this Batarang comes with this Batman. And of course here we have Batman in his classic black and gray Arkham City outfit. And the details on this figure are just amazing. They did a really good job with the detail work on this figure. Now the, that's not to say that the body proportions aren't just a little bit out by comparison to how big and, and what Batman was like in the game. He seems maybe a little bit gangly in comparison to his actual body size in the game and I'll get into that a little bit after but first I really want to go through all the details of this figure because honestly in my opinion this is the best Arkham Batman figure that DC Direct released. So looking up close at this Batman figure, first of all, you can see that the head sculpt is pretty much the same as the original release of the Arkham Batman. There are some differences. For one, the horns are actually narrower than the original release, so there's that. It's painted, in my opinion, far superior, and the eyes, those eyes just look bat menacing. I'm really, really happy with the head on this figure. It's one of my favorite parts, one of the standout parts to this action figure. And then you move down to the actual way that the cowl fits, and this is a completely different cape system in comparison to how they did the cape on the other Batman figures. The other ones kind of went over the shoulder and looked more like the first Arkham game, whereas this one, I prefer this cape over the original Arkham Batman cape. And then, then we look at the detail work on this costume. For one, those gloves, those gauntlets, just look, they look bang on. And the details are nice and crisp and nicely painted. Same thing with the belt. The belt is nicely done. Nicely painted, nicely sculpted, and then even the boots. These are my preferred Arkham Batman boots. I did a, a custom Arkham City Batman with the regular sculpt, and I actually used these boots and these gloves, if I'm not mistaken. But another thing to take note of is not only is the bat symbol sculpted onto the chest, which is nice, and the line work is all sculpted on, but if you take note here, the costume, the texture of his suit is actually sculpted as well. They really did spare no expense with trying to capture every single detail of Arkham City's Batman. This is a fabulous looking figure as far as the detail and sculpt work goes. 
Now to get into the articulation. Now DC Direct was pretty ambitious with the articulation of this figure, and they really didn't do very many figures that had this kind of level of articulation. They really wanted this to be a standout figure. And so for one, you have the head, which doesn't really have a whole lot of movement. It's on a ball joint, but you know, it doesn't really do a whole lot. But then you got the shoulders, and the shoulders, this is typical for a lot of DC Direct figures. The shoulders are on that hinge swivel. You got your bicep swivel. You got your elbows. And, you know, this is not that special for DC Direct. They did do quite a few figures with this, except for the bicep swivel was not something they did all the time. Now, those arms can move up about that high, you know, and out about that much. And then you got your articulation here in the chest, and I'm assuming that that's a peg in there that goes up inside of his chest and he's also got an ab crunch and an ab crunch is not something that was typical for DC Direct figures so that right there off the bat is something different and then you had his groin articulation now I'm very very careful with the groin of this figure very very careful because I've seen these broken online where people have tried to move them too much and they snap. Then you have the leg articulation. This is something that DC Direct didn't usually do. You have a double jointed knee on both of his legs. And that is definitely not something that DC Direct did. And it's kind of dangerous because they didn't really use kid-friendly, play-friendly plastic. And so these can probably snap. I'm not going to push them too much, but if I was someone that did a lot of action figure photography, I would really want to be careful with this figure. And then you got articulation here at the top of the boot, and you've got your ankle articulation in the way of a hinge. And that's actually, that's a lot down. Not a lot forward but a lot down. So, you know what? You can kind of see where I'm getting at. This figure was ambitious with its articulation. It was definitely one of the more articulated DC Direct figures. It didn't do a horrible job. It didn't do a great job. I think overall for a DC Direct figure, this is a pretty darn good attempt at making an improved Arkham City Batman figure. Now, as always, we have a size and scale comparison here for you. We have Arkham City Batman on this side, Arkham Origins Batman on this side. This one, I do have to admit, is where the gloves and the boots from my original Batman went. They're on this Batman, because I just prefer these boots and gloves more. However, for body size, both of these figures are still vanilla. And you can really, really see here just how girthy these figures are in comparison to this one, which is definitely a lot more spindly in comparison. This Batman's like, well, I can tell you're into acrobatics, and these two, it's like, do you even lift, bro? And while we're on the topic of comparisons, I figure I'll crack out what I did with the original head and cape from this Batman. I actually popped it on a custom DC Universe Classics. This one actually took the torso from one of the Super Friends Batman figures, and then I had to boil and pop the arms from the, the bicep swivel down. And the same thing with the groin, that's a complete uh, groin from a different Batman figure, and the belt is actually from a blue and gray Jim Lee sculpted Batman figure. And you put these all together, and I think this makes a really nice, really cool kind of 90s pouch belt giant bat symbol-esque long horned Batman figure. It's one of my favorite customs, absolutely. And then finally for size and scale comparison, I have the non-tactical suit Batfleck Batman figure from the Mattel Multiverse with a custom cape because the one that came on this one was just trash. I had to replace it. But you get an idea here of the size and scale. There's actually not a whole lot of difference. This one is a little bit shorter, but this figure is billed as a 7-inch scale and this one is billed as a 6-inch scale. Man, sometimes those lines get really blurred, don't they? Now, the only other figure that I picked up from Wave 4 is Talia al Ghul, and I picked her up simply because I didn't have a Talia figure to fill in in my Bat Universe or my DC Universe Classics display, but she just is too big. Like, she looks like she suffers from gigantism in comparison to the rest of my DC Universe Classics, and I don't collect the Arkham City figures or the Arkham Origins, so I really just have no place for her. So she sits in a drawer, and she's a bugger to stand up. Let's try and stand her up. Stand up, Talia. Just stand up. It's the big friggin' heels that do it, and she's not well balanced. Come on. St stand up. St stand up. There we go. I pretty much have to have her looking back at the sun for her to stand up. Useless. Now, for as much crap as I've given this figure over the course of the video due to its weird and janky articulation issues, honestly, this for me is going to be a solid 7.5, which is still a very good mark. The reason why I would take off two and a half marks is because, well, for one, the articulation is just a little bit 
weird. And, it, you know, certain points of articulation, as I mentioned before, are pretty darn useless because other points of articulation aren't there and can't do the job to make the other points useful. Also, the body itself seems just a little bit narrow, thus making the body look a little bit spindly or janky, especially in the thin, long leg department compared to the shorter, narrower body. Really though, guys, not a terrible figure, but also not without its faults. And with that, I have to bid you farewell. This video is over. Thank you so much for taking the time to click on this video and watch it. If you've enjoyed this video, found it helpful, educational, funny, or reasonable waste of time, don't be afraid to hit that like button because it's going to let me know that you like the video. If you have anything to say at all, please leave it down in the comment section below because I read every single comment and sometimes I get back to them really, really quickly. And if you think you might want to see more of my sort of content show up in your inbox, well, just hit the subscribe button and remember to ding that bell so you don't miss a video. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day, super friends.